Hey guys, it's Dougie, and guess what we're doing today? We're taking an AP exam. Ooh. So as I mentioned in the last video, I graduated high school recently, and I was at that stage where I was reflecting upon what could have gone better, what could have gone worse. Not much. I remembered while reflecting that one thing that could have gone better was my AP environmental science exam that I took in May of 2020, and I got a one on. I utterly and completely failed that exam, and it is the most shameful part of my life. So ironically, even though I fail, like, all the time, my biggest fear is failure, believe it or not. And so I decided today, using the very limited amount of time that I have to relax on my summer vacation, I'm going to revisit the AP Environmental Science exam. Also, I want to show, like, my growth and in intelligence over the past two years. Because it has been two years, so that's a lot of time to get fucking smart. My intelligence should already be obvious, though, for my 1.996 GPA, which only let me graduate because my school rounded it up to two decimal places, making it a 2.0, the bare minimum required at my high school to graduate. Also, unrelated, but a lot of people in my last video were asking what college I got accepted into. Bitch, where? And I just wanted to let you guys know that it is definitely Harvard. I got accepted into Harvard. No cap. Also, another thing I hope that you guys get from this video, you fuckwads, is environmental education, and it's surprising how little my generation knows about environmental issues. Like, I literally, in my class this past semester, this girl at my table was like, oh, you know, I'll let the future generations deal with climate change, it's not going to affect mine. And I was like, girl. A fucking chunk of ice just fell off of the Antarctic ice shelf the size of New York. Like, that was yesterday, hun. Keep up with the fucking times. Anyways, let's start with this exam. In my AP Environmental Science exam, I only had free response questions, which if you don't know, the AP exams, they have multiple choice and the free response. The multiple choice are what they are, they're multiple choice. Then the free response is more like essay format where like you actually have to like know what you're talking about. So I'm going to be doing multiple choice this time because I feel like if I did free response, you guys would just be watching me in silence, typing. It would be like some type of ASMR video and I'm not into that bullshit because I'm above the drama. So I I found this website called Crack AP. I don't know what the implications are of that website name. Like, is this AP on crack? Is this the butt crack of AP? And so as you can see, they have a bunch of like multiple choice practice tests. Like if you're in AP environmental science or you're going to be like, check out Crack AP. They'll give you some AP crack. So I'm just gonna take practice test one. Okay, here we go. Also, you know Crack AP is for real when they have ads everywhere. Let's do the first one. Which of the following would be most likely to increase competition among the members of a squirrel population in a given area? An epidemic of rabies within the squirrel population. Okay, chill. An increase in the number of hawk predators. An increase in the reproduction of squirrels. An increase in temperature and an increase in food supply. Let's go one by one. Usually what I do with multiple choice is POE, process of elimination. I didn't know what that stood for until just this past semester. An epidemic of rabies in the squirrel population, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure rabies kills squirrels, and if they're killing squirrels, then the population decreases, and that would make less fierce competition, because you have less squirrels per the same amount of, like, resource. So I don't think it's A. An increase in the number of hawk predators, that's kind of the same thing, like, there would be less squirrels then. An increase in the reproduction of squirrels, this would increase the squirrel population, and therefore would cause more competition for resources, finite resources. An increase in temperature? I'm not really sure what that would have to do with, like, increase in competition. I guess if it made the acorns... Oh my god, why did I think it was acorns? If the increase in temperature made, like, the resources more scarce, then maybe. Or an increase in the food supply. It's definitely not that one. So it's either C or D. This is the issue with AP multiple choice questions. They always give you two options that are plausible. So like, it, I increase in temperature, I guess, but not always. It depends on the resource you're talking about. I'm going with an increase in reproduction of squirrels, because no matter what, that's going to increase the population. Approximately how many years ago did life first appear on Earth? The fuck if I know? It definitely wasn't 1 million. I'm pretty sure about that. 500 million? Mm. 
Now, 1 billion is plausible. 3.5 billion is also plausible. 5 billion, I'm pretty sure, is older than the Earth. The Earth is only like 4.5 billion years old, so it's not 5 billion, it's not 1 million. It's either 1 billion or 3.5 billion. I'm going 3.5 billion. 1 billion seems too short. Like, for bacteria and stuff, like those bitches, they're archaic. They're almost as old as my grandma. Which of one of the following statements is false? Oh. I fucking hate these questions. The greenhouse effect is a natural process that makes life on Earth possible, with 98% of total global greenhouse gas emissions being from natural sources, mostly water vapor, and 2% from human-made sources. I don't know, that's oddly specific. The greenhouse effect is a natural process that makes life on Earth possible. That's true. I don't know about 98% of total, glo global greenhouse total global greenhouse gas emissions being from natural sources. So we're gonna revisit that hoe. The United States is the number one contributor to global warming. The Kyoto Protocol would have required the United States to increase its greenhouse gas emissions, primarily carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide, by only 2% per year based on 1990 levels. So I didn't even have to read that whole thing. The Kyoto Protocol was for, like, decreasing global greenhouse gas emissions. Global warming may increase the incidence of many infectious diseases. COVID loves that option. C is for sure false. So it's definitely C. Which of the following would be an external cost? The cost of steel in making a refrigerator. The cost of running a refrigerator for one month. The cost of labor in producing refrigerators, the taxes paid by consumers in purchasing refrigerators, the costs associated with the health care when the refrigerator leaks refrigerant into the atmosphere. It's that one. So I'm pretty sure external costs are like, so like when you're paying for a refrigerator, you're not, the cost of a refrigerator does not include like the cost of those health impacts that will eventually be paying down the line. In which stage of the nitrogen cycle do soil bacteria convert uh, ammonium not uh, ions NH4 plus into nitrate ions NO3 minus a form of nitrogen that can be used by plants well it's converting ammonium into nitrate which sounds like nitrification assimilation I don't think that's even a thing ammonification that's not it because it they're converting ammonium into nitrate. Denitrification is like when it's nitrogen into like not nitrogen. That's all I know. I think it's nitrification. It also could be nitrogen fixation. I have no fucking clue. Which of the following is not an example of environmental mitigation? Oh my fuck. Okay, promoting sound land use planning based on known hazards. Okay, relocating or elevating structures out of the floodplain? Constructing living snow fences? What the fuck is a living snow fence? Organizing a beach cleanup, developing, adopting, and enforcing effective building codes and standards. Okay, so environmental mitigation, there's really two things here. There's prevention and there's mitigation. Mitigation is like alleviating the impacts of an environmental issue that's already occurring, or prevention is like actually preventing the issue. Promoting sound land use planning based on known hazards. That sounds like mitigation to me because the hazards are known and they're not trying to prevent them. They're just trying to mitigate their impacts on land use. Relocating or elevating structures out of the floodplain. That is... Well, that could be mitigation too. Constructing living snow fences. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Organizing a beach cleanup. That's mitigation because you're not preventing beach pollution. Developing, adopting, and enforcing effective building codes and standards. That could also be mitigation. Okay, so which is not mitigation? I'm thinking it's relocating or elevating structures out of the floor. Oh, well, that is mitigation. Whatever, we'll come back to that one. Which of the following statements regard regarding an L... Ni question mark O is f I'm assuming they meant El Nino and for some reason the accent mark above the end did not carry over is false. Depression of the thermocline occurs which cuts off cold water upwelling. A change in atmospheric pressure occurs and is associated with changing ocean water temperatures. El Nino affects weather patterns globally. That's true. I know that's true. So it's not C. An increase in greenhouse gases may increase the incidence of El Ninos. That is also true, I feel like. Northeast and Southeast trade winds increase. Depression of the thermocline. Okay, so the thermocline, for some reason, I'm just getting the vibe that that's like an ocean thing, like the thermal gradient of the ocean from top waters to bottom waters. Okay, wait, this is coming back to me. This is coming back. The El Nino. The El Nino, I think, is the weakening of winds in the Pacific. So, would that make northeast and southeast trade winds false? I think it's E, actually. Oh my god. Most of Earth's freshwater supply is found in- Okay, this is possible for me. Lakes, ice caps and glaciers, aquifers, es Okay, so estuar estuaries have brackish water. Those are not freshwater. Rivers. Never mind, I don't know. I'm thinking ice caps and glaciers. That holds a shit ton of ice. Yeah, it's ice caps and glaciers. Most municipal solid waste in the United States consist of yard waste? Food waste, plastic, paper, glass. 
I'm assuming it's plastic. That seems probably like the most likely one. Although food waste could be it too. Because Americans produce a lot of food waste. Rising sea levels due to global warming would be responsible for all of the following except. Okay, so find the one that global warming does not affect. Destruction of coastal wetlands. That is true. The wetlands would be fucking drowned. Beach erosion, yep, obviously. If you have rising sea levels, you're going to have more beaches dealing with higher tides, which when the tides move out, that erodes the beach. Increases due to storm and flood. Increases in what? Increases in, I'm assuming it means increases in storm and flood damage, not due to. Yeah, that's true, because with rising sea levels, you're going to get more floods. Increased salinity of estuaries and aquifers. That is also true. So, I think all of these are the result of rising sea levels. Which of the following characteristics are not typical of a ground fire? <sighs> fire smolders and or creeps slowly through the litter and humus layers. I used to always read that as hummus until one time on Zoom, I was reading my answer to a question and I said hummus and my teacher was like, <sighs> You're gonna get a one on the exam. Consuming all or most of the organic cover and exposing mineral soil or underlying rock. Burns the upper litter layer and small branches that lie on or near the ground. Usually move rapidly through an area and do not consume all the organic layer. Release considerable amounts of nutrients from the burn fuels, destroying many small organisms and fungi that live in the humus and organic layers. Consume seeds stored in the litter and kill roots in all but deep soil layers. So humus is like the top organic layer of soil and consuming all or most of the organic cover and exposing mineral soil or underlying rock. That one seems most likely from like photos I've seen of wildfires. So I don't think it's one. Burns the upper litter layer and small branches that lie on or near the ground. Usually move rapidly through an area and do not consume all the organic layer. That doesn't seem typical of a ground fire, but I could be wrong. And kill roots and all but deep soil layers. That last part seems suspicious to me. But two and three isn't an option. So I know that two or three have to be right. So I don't think it's A because one seems likely. I know it's not A, it's not D, or E, so it's either B or C. I think it's two that is false. Yeah. Place the following economic activities in order, starting with those activities closest to natural resources and ending with those farthest away. Use raw materials to produce or manufacture something new and more valuable. Professions that process, administer, and disseminate information. Computer engineers and lawyers. Agriculture, fishing, hunting, herding, forestry, and mining. Including, include all activities that amount to doing service for others, e.g. doctors and secretaries. So we have to rank those activities closest to natural resources and ending with those farthest away. Use raw materials to produce or manufacture something new or more valuable. Agriculture, fishing, hunting, herding, for- Aren't those two kind of the same thing? Like with agriculture, you're using raw materials to produce or manufacture food? I'm thinking threes first, because those are like, you're actually in the environment using those natural resources. Two se- or one seems more like a- like a factory type of vibe, where like you're given the raw materials. So I'm thinking three goes first, so that eliminates A, B, E. I think one is next, so that doesn't eliminate C or D. Great. Okay, so then that gives us C, which is agriculture culture, then raw materials, then professions that process, administer, and disseminate information. I think that one is last, so I'm thinking it's D, because you have the raw materials, like grown in agriculture, or like harvested in fishing, or hunting, or forestry, then you send those raw materials to be manufactured, then activities that amount to doing service for others, doctors or secretaries, they're using those products usually. I'm going. I'm just not even. Okay, most of the municipal trash flowing in the ocean is composed of plastic, paper, wood, metal cans, yard waste. Uh, plastic. Most of the Earth's mass is found in this region. <laughs> it's called my fat ass. Which is compressed of iron, magnesium, alu alu sorry, aluminium, and silicon oxygen compounds at over 18,000, wait, 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, 1000 degrees Celsius for European fucks. Most of this region is solid, but the upper third is more plastic-like in nature. Which region is being described? The troposphere? Okay, the lithosphere I know is like the hard part, like the surface crust. Oh. Apparently it's not. It's not the crust. The core is completely... Is the core completely liquid? I know like the inner core is, but the outer core is not. I'm thinking it's the mantle. I don't know. I'm just gonna go with the mantle. I don't really care. Which is following statements regarding coral reefs is false. Modern reefs can be as much as 2.5 million years old. Coral reefs capture about half of the calcium flowing into the ocean every year, fixing it into calcium carbonate rock at very high rates. 
Coral reefs store large amounts of organic carbon and are very effective sinks for carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Coral reefs are among the most biologically diverse ecosystems on the planet. I know that is true. Coral reefs are among the most endangered ecosystems on Earth. That is also true. So it's one of these three. <sighs> Modern reefs can be as much as 2.5 million years old. Yeah, I feel that one. That's vibing in my inner conscience. So I feel like here you need to have an in-depth understanding of how calcium carbonate is formed, and I don't have that. I think it's C. I don't think they're effective sinks for carbon dioxide. That doesn't seem right. Which of the following strategies to control pollution would incur the greatest environmental cost? Green costs, or wait, not green costs, green taxes, government subsidies for reducing pollution, regulation, charging a user fee, tradable pollution, right? So charging a user fee would not incur any governmental costs probably because you're making the user pay for that i already think it's regulation i know for a fact like bitch that clean air act that we have over here in the u.s that shit cost money so i'm pretty sure it's regulation green taxes that would not really incur governmental costs i don't think because green taxes usually taxes don't they usually go to the government so wouldn't the government be getting money from that tradable pollution rights i don't even know what that is okay in terms of annual production which two crops listed below had the greatest success during the green revolution the green revolution was like introduction of modern agricultural technologies like industrial technologies which increased food supplies the green revolution wasn't that like in india or something rice could be one of them wheat is definitely one of them i'm pretty sure it's wheat and rice in 1989 the exxon valdez spilled 10.8 million gallons of crude oil into the prince william William Sound in Alaska. What happened to most of the oil? It was cleaned up by Exxon. <laughs> Only idiots think that one. It eventually evaporated into the air. Mm, probably not. It sank into the ground. Wait, what, Prince William Sound, is that like water or is that land? I'm assuming this is like an oil spill in the ocean, but I could be wrong. I'm just gonna guess it's in the ocean. So it probably didn't sink into the ground. It biodegraded and photolyzed. No, it dispersed into the water column. That seems like most probable. Yeah, I'm thinking it's E. It definitely was not cleaned up by Exxon. I know for a fact that is not the one. It was 1980. These fossil fuel companies were and still are wild in. Which the following contributes least to speciation? Okay, so speciation, I'm pretty sure, is like the creation of new species. Sexual reproduction. Okay, it's asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction, if anything, increases the genetic diversity and therefore would allow for increase in speciation. Selection definitely creates speciation. Like we saw that the classic example, that short ass fucking giraffe who can't eat the leaves too high up. Variation, that's, yeah, obviously. Isolation definitely is one of the driving factors of speciation. I, yeah, it's definitely asexual reproduction. Here we go. Last question, guys. Which act's primary goal is to protect human health and the environment from the potential hazards of waste disposal and calls for conservation of energy and natural resources, reduction in waste generated, environmentally sound waste management practices? RCRA, that is like the reclamation I, all i know i don't know what these stand for i know that the rcra deals with solid ways furfa that's like i'm pretty sure that's like an educational thing circla is super fun osha that's like a workplace regulation thing fema uh, i don't know what that is i'm pretty sure it's rcra okay let's submit and see how bad we did remember i got a one on the exam and a one translates to like literally getting like two of these right so let's see if i've improved at all i got almost all of them wrong okay all right guys i'm back on camera i'm glad that i came back to the mp environmental science exam and faced my fear of failure and i'm glad that i didn't completely fail i still kind of failed though anyway so if you guys enjoyed this video please give a like and don't forget to subscribe thank you and hit that notification bell because I put every single week now that it is summer. And I'll see you guys in the next video. It's going to be a gaming video. Yay! I fucking love that shit. Anyway, see you guys then. Bye!